Hello and welcome back to Project 380. In this video, I'm installing a quick release steering wheel to the Mark 1. So this is what I believe to be the standard steering wheel for my car. I think there was only a few Merlots come out with this steering wheel. I have still got the centre for it, but that's now being prepped to be re-clear coated, as it's a little bit dull compared to the rest of the steering wheel. But I really want to keep this steering wheel with this car. And lucky for me, this steering wheel does attach with six Allen key bolts, which means I can bolt this steering wheel up to some aftermarket equipment. So time to start removing this steering wheel from the car. There's a few things we've got to do first. Get the steering wheel as straight as you can. If you have got a model with an airbag here, at this point, you want to be disconnecting your battery and leaving it for 10, 15 minutes. Then you know the airbag is safe to remove. If you have got an airbag model, there'll just be two screws from behind the steering wheel, which are a little tricky to get to, but you can turn the steering wheel to gain access to the bolt up here. Just remember to straighten the steering wheel back out once the airbag's removed. But I don't have an airbag, I just need to remove my horn from the centre. And disconnect it. This usually is held in a little bit better, but it's actually held in with the centre piece. But now with all that out of the way, I've just got six bolts to remove. And the steering wheel's off. Now this is where it's going to vary a little bit. If you've got a standard steering wheel, obviously your steering wheel is still going to be on at this stage, as the standard one isn't a six bolt steering wheel pattern. But if it's a special edition or aftermarket, you'll be at this stage. But with a standard steering wheel, with the airbag out of the way or the horn, you'll get access to this big nut here, which is a 21 millimeter. That needs to be removed and usually it's pretty tight. Now, if we go use a breaker bar, we're probably going to move that steering wheel because at the minute it is nice and straight. So it is going to be easiest if you've got an impact gun. Now, I appreciate not everyone has an impact gun, but if you don't, grab a mate to hold one of the front wheels nice and still in the hope to keep your steering wheel straight while using a breaker bar. The nut we want to put back on just a few threads as when we remove our steering wheel or our steering wheel adapter, that's gonna save the horn and the airbag wires behind this, as they do tend to break if you pull this off too hard. But sometimes this is really stiff to get off. So if you still got a steering wheel attached, you can hit it from behind, use both hands and don't hold a camera at the same time. Try and do it evenly so you don't bend anything. It's probably gonna take a lot of effort, but it will eventually come off. So let's get this removed. Well. I'm pretty hot and sweaty now. That was fighting me all the way, but it's finally loose. So now I can fully remove that nut and gently pull that out of the way, watching out for any wires. So everything's off and we're almost ready for the quick release. But if you've got a Mark II or a model with an airbag, there's a few steps you need to do here first to be able to keep your horn. So on most Mark Ones, we have got a little spring contact here which runs on the brass contact on the back of the steering wheel, which is the positive for your horn. But if you've got a Mark II, this is gonna be slightly different. It's not gonna have that. And there's a little trick I use, which I've already covered in a video, which I'll link up here. And of course, if you've got an airbag, more than likely your aftermarket steering wheel isn't gonna have an airbag. So you're gonna to wanna to put a resistor in the airbag wires. Now is the perfect time to do it. So now you're ready to install your quick release, but most quick releases are universal and not car specific. So to attach the quick release to the steering column, you're gonna need a boss kit, something like this, which is specific to your car. So here we've got the right splines for an MX-5 and the two little holes you can see either side goes on these two plastic tabs here. That is what self cancels your indicators. So make sure you get the specific boss. Mark one and Mark two are different. So make sure you get the right one. So the steering wheel boss kit. Yes, this is the one that I have just removed from the car. And this is typically what you would buy. But because this is about two and a half inches thick, if we install that and then the quick release on top, that steering wheel is gonna be really close to us. So instead of using this thick boss, I've purchased a slimline one, which is a lot slimmer. Now I'll openly admit this is an NRG replica, 
and the only reason I bought a replica is because it was quarter of the price. But apart from having no logo on it, it's pretty much identical. And it's got the brass contact on the back, so the horn still works, and the two holes either side of the splined hole for the indicators. So I'm gonna put a little bit of dielectric grease on this brass contact, just so you don't get a horrible when you steer, and it ensures a nice, good contact. All greased up now and ready to go on. All I need to do is make sure I line up the two holes with the two plastic nubs. Make sure you don't force it on because those plastic bits will break. I'm having a little bit of trouble. This raised ring here on the steering column cowl is contacting the white ring on this boss kit. And we can't remove that white ring, but I have got spare cowls. So I don't mind trimming this one up. I'm simply just going to cut this ring out all trimmed out now i had to go a little bit wider than i expected and i'll admit it's not the neatest of jobs because i'm at my parents with limited resources but hopefully now this should clear well it looks like it should clear now time for the nut i'm only going to give that one ugga dugger just in case this is slightly in the wrong position, it's gonna be easy for me to come back later and just adjust it a little bit. Now, I'm finally ready for the quick release. And I may have gone all out. I've gone for an NRG quick release and keeping with the theme of the Mark I, get out. I had to get one that matched the car. I've gone for an NRG Prisma limited edition with cherry blossom. I think that's gonna look really good in here. And because I've gone for an NRG one with an NRG replica boss, we've already got the correct wires on the boss and on the quick release. So they just need connecting up and the quick release bolting onto the boss. So I'm gonna separate the quick release to do this. So I've got just the part that bolts to the car first. These bolts do not need to be that tight. They will round and strip really quickly. So just give them a good nip. That's all on and the horn connected. And I think it's lined up pretty well. That top bolt looks nice and central. So hopefully my steering wheel will go on straight. Now to connect the other half of the quick release up to the steering wheel. I am just gonna change the connector on that black wire from a male spade to a female spade so I can connect my horn back up. Like so. I'm going to be putting the steering wheel on the quick release off of the car and you'll see why in a little bit. But if you can see that little dot next to the top bolt hole, that is an indicator to symbolize the top of the steering wheel. And that lines up with a little dot there near the NRG logo, which you probably can't see on camera, which is also the top of the steering wheel. So these line up. So all I've got to do is bolt my steering wheel on in the correct orientation to the quick release all bolted up now and I think that looks really good really fitting with the car but now the moment you've all been waiting for does this quick release do the ding you know I had to get the one that made the ding sound but all on the car now it is slightly closer to me but it's really not too bad I love it it definitely suits the car but I have a question to leave with you you've installed a quick release so what do you do with your steering wheel once you've disconnected it? Do you shove it on your seat? Do you shove it on your dashboard? Or do you strap it to your backpack, pretending to be someone out of Tokyo Drift? Let me know in the comments down below. Now, once I've got the center bit all refurbished and looking as shiny as the rest of the steering wheel, I really want to put my steering wheel and quick release on display. The only thing left to do is make sure our steering wheel's straight and make sure the horn works. I'm satisfied that that steering wheel is nice and straight. All I've got to do now is go back and remove this part of the quick release and torque down that main nut to the correct torque setting. So that is an NRG replica slimline boss, NRG quick release and a steering wheel all installed on the Mark 1. If this video helped you install your boss or your quick release, let me know in the comments down below. As per usual, like, comment, share and subscribe if you're new and I'll see you in the next one. Mm -hmm.